October 2023, I decided to move completely outside of my comfort zone and try something I'd never done before. You're crazy. Become a wedding videographer. Wedding, I love weddings. Drinks all around. Fast forward to now, after completing my first full year as a wedding videographer, there are a few pointers that I would give to others who were thinking about doing the same thing and starting as a wedding videographer with no experience. So here are five things that I've learned in my first year as a wedding videographer. Number one, find inspiration, find a mentor, build relationships with other videographers. Don't be one of those people who think that other wedding videographers are just your competition because they're a lot more than that. Other videographers can help you, they can give you advice and they can also be a means of inspiration. And considering that every year in the UK there are around 250,000 weddings, except for 2020 when there was only 100,899. Because Coven then it's pretty obvious there is more than enough work to go around. So reach out to other videographers, ask them for their advice. Don't just see them as being your competition. And another thing, binge watch wedding films on YouTube. Two, essential equipment. Don't be tempted by all the bells and whistles. They can come at a later date. To start with, you just need the bare essentials. The simple bare necessities. A good camera that can shoot video. 4K is amazing, but 1080 is absolutely fine. Ideally, a second camera as well. However, if I'm honest, throughout my first year, I sometimes use my iPhone as a second camera. It shoots 4K at 60 frames a second, and it's great to use if my main camera is obstructed. For example, if the photographer walks in front of my camera, then I can switch to my iPhone, which is capturing a different angle until my main camera is clear again. The second essential bit of equipment would be a tripod. This is so when you're filming a ceremony or you're filming speeches, you can have your camera on your tripod in one fixed position. And the third piece of essential equipment I would say would be a microphone. Ideally, you want minimum two microphones. This is for recording audio at the ceremony and at the speeches. I myself use the DJI mics, which all I do is clip to the groom during the ceremony, usually inside the top pocket or behind the tie and then that will capture the audio for the bride and groom at the ceremony. And for the speeches, most venues will have a microphone. Now all I do is I duct tape my microphone to the main microphone, press record, and that'll pick up all the audio from the speeches. Obviously there are other pieces of equipment that you'll need, for example, SD cards or duct tape. However, a camera, microphone, and a tripod are gonna be the three essential items that you need to get before you start. Three, build a portfolio. So you might not like this next one, but you're going to have to do some freebies. For free? For free. Starting out, you probably want to offer one or two jobs completely free of charge. This is going to allow you to make some mistakes because you're going to make mistakes. So being able to make those mistakes in a low pressure environment is so important. When you've got a bride and groom who understand that you're just starting out, you're looking to build a portfolio and you're offering this service free of charge, the pressure's not on. The expectations aren't right up there. Their expectations are they're not paying for it and whatever they get, they're gonna be happy with because the alternative was they weren't gonna have a videographer or they were gonna have a videographer, but they chose to go for the free option rather than paying for one. Either way, it allows you to build your portfolio. It allows you to make some mistakes and to learn from those mistakes. It allows you to get the experience because when you first start, the experience is worth more than a paycheck. I never needed your money. Four social media from day one document your journey as a wedding videographer showcase your work on instagram on TikTok, on youtube build a following and interact with those followers interact with other people on that platform so wedding venues wedding suppliers engaged couples who are planning a wedding in a year's time you want to be engaging with these people building a relationship with these people because when they come to book a wedding videographer or when they come to recommend a wedding videographer they'll think of you. And of course, social media is obviously a good place to showcase your work and to show other couples what your work looks like and what your personality is like so that when they book you, they know exactly what they're getting. Five, personality is just as important as quality. When you're filming someone else's wedding, it's important to know that this is their special day. This is gonna be probably the happiest day of their lives. So be a part of that day. And by that, obviously, I don't mean get too involved like, being in the photos or giving a speech, but become more like a friend. Best friend. 
not just to the bride and groom, but to the guests as well, to their family, to their friends, to other suppliers as well. Be personable, be helpful where you can. Have a laugh with the guests, work in tandem with the photographer. Make sure that when it's time to go home, people are sad that you're leaving. Not only is this important for the bride and groom and their expectation of you on the day, but often you'll go to a wedding and there will be an engaged couple there who perhaps haven't thought about videography yet. And after seeing you, after meeting you, seeing your work, they decide that actually they're going to get in touch and they're going to get a quote or other suppliers who maybe have couples they're working for at a later date who still haven't booked a videographer and they're looking for a recommendation. Even though you're at a wedding to work, it's also a great time to market yourself and your business and what you do. The most common bit of feedback I get from couples after a wedding is that they felt like I was more of a guest that they were enjoying their day with rather than someone who was working for them. You're our friend. So there are five things that I've learned during my first year as a wedding videographer. Now, although I've had a year as a wedding videographer now, speaking in front of a camera and uploading to YouTube is very new to me. So it would mean the world if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment with any questions or ideas for another video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.